Building and installing a custom car audio system can be an awesome, very rewarding experience. There's nothing better than completing the install, sitting back, and just enjoying being completely submerged in your favorite music. But there's a problem. How in the world do I get started with my system? What do I need to do first? Look, I understand car audio can be difficult and it can be complicated, but in this video, I wanna outline the main steps that it takes to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. We're gonna go through the process step by step, from coming up with a goal and planning all the way to installing and final system tuning. Once you understand the whole process, your next install will likely go a lot more smoothly and you'll likely be much more satisfied with the end result. Let's get started, roll that intro. Hey everybody, Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. On this channel, I do car audio builds, reviews, tutorials, and lessons just like this one, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. So before we get started, I just wanna say that I think it's really important that anytime you start any car audio project, you think through the steps that I'm about to go through in this video. I feel like a lot of times the reasons that people end up with a system that they're not completely satisfied with is they really didn't think through this process. So let's dive in and think through the average system creation. So the first thing we wanna do, and this might be the most important step, is figure out our goal. Now obviously with a car audio system, there's literally a million different combinations and things that we could do, but I wanna break it into three basic tiers that you can kind of pick from. Now these three tiers are kind of structured based on how complicated they are, from simple to most complicated, but something I wanna stress is you can have a wide range of budgets as well. So just because you're doing a simple install, you could have a much higher budget than something that is not is simple and you use maybe lower quality gear. The point is the budget doesn't necessarily define exactly which of these tiers you're gonna be within. Now understand that selecting one of these tiers is important to proceeding through the rest of this list and how we ultimately install everything. So it's very important to consider. So goal tier number one, adding a subwoofer and an amplifier. I consider this the first tier that you could select from because this is the tier that gets you basically the most bang for your buck, the most change to your audio system for your dollar. Again, depending on the subwoofer and amplifier that you pick, there could obviously be a wide range of different budgets that you end up in. Now tier number two is doing a subwoofer, amplifiers, and speakers. This is when you start to get into truly higher performance sound, where you're not only adding bass, you're also improving the mid range and the highs within your system. This is important because you want the mids and highs to match the performance of the subwoofer. Now notice up to this point, I haven't mentioned custom fabrication, and that's what comes into play in tier number three. Tier number three is subwoofer speakers, amplifiers, and additional equipment like digital signal processors, and also making sure that the install is completely integrated into the vehicle. So that's when we start taking into account mounting the speakers in the best location to have the best audio, and and also doing custom things like custom door panels, custom beauty panels to tie all of the install into the vehicle. So now you know one of the best ways to get started with building a system is considering your goal. Now I know everyone out there has the idea that, man, I just want like the best system I could ever possibly have, but you have to be realistic. If this is the first system that you've installed, it might be best to just go with an amplifier and subwoofer so that you can kind of learn and progress. You don't necessarily wanna dive into a super complicated tier three install where you're doing all sorts of custom fabrication and everything right off the bat. You should plan on working up to that point. And there's nothing to say that you can't start at tier one with your initial install, go through the whole process, get everything installed, and then in the future, upgrade to tier two or tier three. Now let's move on to the next very important part of the process, and that's planning. Something that's very important to understand is that the install quality goes a long way in the total performance of a system. A great install with average equipment can easily outshine a poor install with high level equipment. So always keep that in mind. 
Now a big part of the planning phase is figuring out exactly what will fit and what is compatible with your vehicle. Along the way, you can analyze how these different things fit within your budget. I always think it's a good idea to start with your source unit. You basically need to make a decision on whether you want to use the stock radio or if you want to upgrade to an aftermarket radio. Now in today's day and age, a lot of different vehicles are starting to have climate controls integrated into the radio along with other systems that are part of the vehicle. So that's not always an easy choice to just say, oh, I just want aftermarket. This is something that you'll have to research and plan for during the planning stage. Now, if you're planning on adding a subwoofer, this is the time to measure the part of the vehicle that you plan on putting it in. And I actually have a pretty detailed video about that that you can check out up here on how to actually determine what cubic foot airspace you actually have available. Something else to consider is how much additional power can you be pulling from the car's electrical system? You can't always simply add a 10,000 watt amplifier without upgrading the electrical system of the vehicle. So this is something else that you'll need to research and plan for. During the planning phase, if you plan on adding speakers, you'll also need to research what sizes are already installed in your vehicle so that you can select those sizes. And if you're going with more of a custom fabrication route, you can obviously pick whatever speakers you want to, but you're gonna need to consider where you're actually gonna mount them and do some planning on that side. In fact, you'll need to take into account what crossover points you ultimately plan to use and what size speakers that you should use so that you can cross them over with each other before they start beaming. I have more about beaming and crossovers also available in a sound quality playlist that you can check out up here. So planning is important, but before we move on, there's something I wanna stress. It is important, but don't let it bog you down. I see a lot of guys that will just let the planning phase overwhelm them and they never end up getting started because they're just so worried about every fine little detail. In this phase, you shouldn't be worried about trying to measure out exactly how long each wire is so that you can order that exact length online. Buy more than what you need. It's worth it to spend a few extra bucks to not be stressed out and to actually be able to start your project. So let's move on. You've come up with a goal, you've planned out everything, now it's time to start purchasing. Now in the purchasing phase, you're obviously gonna to wanna to do some research on the different products that you're comparing and planning on potentially selecting. For instance, if you're planning on upgrading the head unit of your vehicle, you could check out some different YouTube videos online to see some of the different features in the menu navigation. And actually, if you're buying a head unit, that's definitely something I suggest that you check out one of your local car audio retailers. You can always see them right there in person and consider giving them your support. You'll likely get a good warranty and you'll have tech support if you need it. Also, a lot of times if you do have a newer vehicle, it might be easier to just let a shop do the hard work of actually installing a head unit or installing a DSP and actually integrate it into the vehicle. And then that way you can focus on what I consider is the more fun stuff, the fabrication side of things, uh, custom mounting things just a consideration you might wanna make. Finally, during the purchasing phase, if you're doing an all out install where you're doing lots of custom fabrication, you're gonna to wanna to plan for your material costs as well. So we're talking about wood, plastic, specialty tools, finishing materials, adhesives, everything, make sure that you have it on hand so that you're not waiting for stuff during the middle of an install. So we got everything purchased. Let's start the install phase. And this is where we start to put all of everything that's went into planning so far into action. So you're gonna to wanna to start the install with removing all of the different panels from the vehicle that you'll need in order to get access to speakers, to get access to different wiring that you might need to tap into, to get access to the radio, and to have access to wiring paths that go back to where you're gonna add your subwoofer all of those different panels. Additionally, if you're planning on doing some sort of sound treatment process, you'll wanna take out whatever panels you need to do for that. And if you're doing a full sound treatment process, you might even be pulling the full interior, which is so fun. Okay, it's kinda of cool, it's worth the results. If you wanna check out where I've done some full interior pulls and completely sound ended and everything, check out up here. Once all the different panels are pulled and out of the way, the next thing I like to do is mount all of the different electrical components. Basically, anything that has a wired connection. So in this case, I'm gonna be mounting the amplifiers, I'm gonna be mounting the digital signal processor, I'm gonna be mounting the fuses and power distribution. And you might be mounting it straight to the vehicle or you might be mounting it to something that you fabricated like an amplifier rack. The reason I like to do this now is because then I know exactly where all my different wires will need to run and once I actually start running all of the wiring, which is the next step, I can cut it exactly to length. 
Now I do wanna point out, obviously, if you were installing new speakers, you don't wanna mount them and then have to somehow wire behind them. You would do it in the order where you run the wires to those and then mount the speakers. And keep in mind, when you're mounting the speakers, you can really improve the performance of the speakers, particularly in the mid-bass region, if you follow some of the different tips that I outline in this video up here. Man, I'm pointing up there a lot in this video, but I just wanna give you guys as much help as you can through this whole process so you can check out some of the older videos that I've already made. Once all the wiring's done, then I usually like to move on to final fabrication where we're fabricating the subwoofer box and we're doing fabrication on the different beauty panels that are gonna go in front of it that might hide the amplifiers. Maybe we're fabricating a dash kit that's gonna have an iPad in it or we're adding like a controller for our DSP, things like that. We're gonna do all that last because then we know exactly where our wiring already is. We have all the sound insulation in place so we're not gonna be able to not fit some something back in because we built it before we actually put in the sound insulation. I made that mistake before. And while we're talking about fitment of different pieces, I also wanna mention when you are custom fabricating things, it's very important that you consider when you're making something out of wood, when you go to fit it together, it's not gonna be just wood when you're done. You're probably gonna be wrapping it in vinyl or carpet. So it's important to consider the thickness of those materials. And once again, I have a video all about that. So to finish the installation phase, we're gonna button everything up by reinstalling all of our panels. Hopefully we didn't break any of the panel clips when we pulled things off, and if we did, now's the time obviously to replace them because you don't want your panels rattling. So we got everything installed, what's next? Tuning. We're gonna start the tuning phase with setting our gain on all of our amplifiers and the levels on all of our different audio equipment. The goal here is to prevent distortion and clipping of the audio signal. Next up, if our equipment has the capability, we wanna move on to setting our crossovers along with our time alignment. If those are foreign terms to you, I also have some videos about the tuning process. You'll also want to use an RTA, which is a real-time analyzer, which you can basically look at the whole audio spectrum and can see the level at all the different frequencies, and you can level everything out so that it sounds natural. Or you can match a target response curve. A lot of people, like myself, love their bass, so you might have more bass, but it's all going to be level bass, and then it's going to roll down, and it's going to have a nice mid-range, and I don't like my music super bright and piercing my ears, so I usually roll that off as well that's considered matching a target response and it's also very critical to the performance of your system. So what's left to do? Just sit back, relax, and listen to some tracks. Sweet rhyme, bro. As always guys, Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here and you did enjoy this content, I'd appreciate if you consider subscribing. I make content like this weekly, and if you'd like to stay in touch between the videos, you can always check out my Instagram page at Car Audio Fab and on Facebook, Car Audio Fabrication. A special thanks goes out to Eddie, Brian, Ali, Finchie, EJ, Emmanuel, Rory, Truman, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon support team. These guys help make contributions per video that helps me keep this channel alive. If you'd like to learn more about that, check it out down below. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. As always, remember to design, build, and install.